everyone and welcome to season nine, episode 10 of the Pet Photographers Club podcast. You are with co-host Kirsty McConnell and today uh, we are diving into an Instagram audit. I decided to actually divide it amongst a bunch of accounts rather than just doing it on one um, because often, well, nowadays there's so many resources available to us that most people are doing really well with their Instagram optimization. Um, but everybody seems to have like one or two things that they can improve. And so rather than just looking at the one account and how great they're doing, except for one thing, we're going to divide it by um, a bunch of different accounts. So big thank you to those that put their hand up last minute to allow me to use this as a sample. And um, anyway, let's just jump straight in it, into this, sorry. By the way, this is a video episode. So if you're listening on iTunes, you might want to jump over to the petphotographersclub.com forward slash podcast forward slash 0910 so that you can catch the video part. Okay, so first of all, we're going to look at nine tips for an Instagram that converts. And let's start with searchable username and business name. This is a big one that lots of people miss. I don't know if it's because you're not aware or it's just habit and we haven't changed it yet. I'm not sure the reason, but okay. So if we analyze this account here, the account of Sniff Stories Pet Photography, you'll see um, that Saloni has used two different lines in the username, so that's the handle, and the business name, okay? Which is awesome, great job. Most people did not do that. What is missing is a location. So probably what I would look at doing is turning this into instead of saying sniff underscore underscore stories pet photography i would turn it into pet photography india for example or if you think that you're because it's a keyword it's what people are searching for i would add more specific than that more even a city okay so that's what i would consider putting in there basically when people use the search function here uh, the only parts of your instagram that are searchable are those two uh, sorry, those two. So the bio is not, all right, what you write in here. So you really want to make sure that they are keyword friendly. So location in one and um, your name in the other or reverse. If you can also add dog or cat photography, whatever your specialty is, that would be recommended because most people will not search pet photographer. If they're looking for a dog photographer, they will search dog. And if they're doing cat, they'll do the same thing. Dog, horses, same thing. So if you scroll down, we can see that Saloni mostly photographs dogs. And so probably it makes sense to put in this account, Sniff Stories Dog Photography, and then Sniff Stories by Saloni in India, for example, or mixing it up somewhere so that you cover both of those topics. Good. Moving along to tip number two, it is add your location. Now I'm on a computer, so I can't actually um, show you this account, the picture your dog account, because it doesn't show location on a computer anyway. But you can see in my little photo here um, that nowhere does it say, my screen capture, where um, picture your dog is in, I think that's the Netherlands. Um, it does say it like in the bio, but what you can actually do is go in and add it um, to your actual location. So if I have a look now, and if you guys jump in now and have a look, type in picture your dot your dot dog, and the account will come up. And you'll see that there isn't a location other than in the bio. So what you can do is use the location area for that. And in the bio, then you have those extra few words or extra few uh, characters available to put something else. So instead, maybe if you want to search for, um, gee, I'm trying to find somebody who's actually got it on their account now. Okay, so if you search for Indigo Pet Photography, that's Karen Blatt's um, pet photography business in Canada, you will see that she has St. Catherine's in the location which is super useful because people can actually click on it and it will open in Google Maps so they can see if you're close by or not. So just a tip there, um, utilize the bio characters for adding more information, but it's not searchable. Okay, so use the location for that. 
Tip number three is consider your profile photo. So when you leave comments, and by the way, I hope you are leaving comments, your profile photo comes up beside your name and it makes sense to make it something that people are going to want to click on, right? So you're a photographer. I mean, you have the choice. You can either use your logo or a recognizable portrait of yourself or your work um, because it is going to be listed beside your business name as well, which will be in the comment there. So if we have a look at a couple of account options for that, Paparazzi, for example, she has a fantastic profile photo here that's recognizable because it's her and a bunch of dogs. People are not going to forget it. And it's clearly like, you know, with a blue background, it's going to stand out when she leaves a comment. So it's really great. This could be an option if you want to have a portrait, especially if you're a strong personal brand, by the way, like if you're known as Kirsty from Bits of Bernard, like I was, it would make sense for me to have my face. But also I had a very recognizable logo. And so it also made sense to have a logo. So I had the choice. Colorado Dog um, Venture Pup Photography um, by Chris Fisher, I think this. He's got his uh, logo as the profile picture. And I think it works really well because it's a memorable logo. And again, that bit of color is going to pop out when he leaves a comment on somebody's Instagram. So just keep that in mind. You've got a bunch of choices there for you. Okay. So let's have a look. I found an account. Anyway, have a look at Rogue Pause Photography. And if you're watching this as a video, I have it up on the screen. Um, so let's click on any of her photos. Boom. And here on the right hand side, we can see this photo was taken in Wagga Wagga, New South Wales, Australia. Great. Big thumbs up for that. Awesome job. You're putting in your locations. Okay. What I would recommend you consider now as a step further is if any of these locations are not private property, but if you're shooting at a location that isn't, perhaps it's um, a bushland that's really popular for walking a dog. Or maybe it's a popular beach uh, for dog people walking their dog. If that's the case, I would tag the actual beach or the actual bushland location um, because the next time somebody is there and they look up the tag because they're adding their own photo, they're going to see your work. So it's like free advertising. So let me have a look. I think Colorado Dog does that. Oh, sorry. Adventure Pup Photography does that. So if I just click on one of these, this is a great uh, example by Adventure Pup Photography. He's put his State Forest State Park, Colorado. And I imagine if I click on this now, because it's clickable, a location. Hopefully it's going to work when I'm on a computer. <laughs> okay. So when we click on that, it opens up. Um, and you can see recent photos that have been taken there. Or if you're on a phone, you'll be able to also look at um, popular ones instead of recent. And so if this is a very popular dog walking location, it makes sense that you tag your photo here. The next tip, tip number five, is to think about your hashtags, okay? Now, I had a really good example for this. Somebody that suggested that we use their provider look, and it was Chantal Levis's. Uh, photography. I apologize, Chantal, if I just pronounced your name very badly. Um, so if I just click on any of her random photos, and here we go, you can see her hashtags here. Great. She's used the Brie Airedale Terrier. She's used dog photographer, something a bit more generic. Um, and then dogs of Instagram, and then also the camera brand. So she's covered a range of hashtags here. So photographers, Airedale lovers and dog lovers are all covered. The thing extra to consider is how often those hashtags get used. So you have a maximum of 30 hashtags that you can use per post. That's the maximum at the moment as it's time of recording. Some analytics suggest that the ideal number to use is nine. Um, in my other business, we actually use all 30 and uh, we manage social media accounts for wineries. Um, we use all 30. 
because there isn't that much proof that it's any better using the nine. So we stick with the 30. So you can decide what you want to do. Either use all 30 or go with the apparent, uh, apparently optimized number of nine. But within those hashtags, you want to break it down. So you're not doing, say, all 30 of hashtags that have 30 million uses. Because in 30 million, it means that in two seconds, somebody else is going to use that hashtag and then another two seconds, somebody else. And within an hour, your post is 100 down and nobody's going to see it. So it's good to use them on occasion, but you definitely don't want all 30 to be those heavily used, very popular hashtags. So something like dog photographer is probably a very heavily used one. Dogs on Instagram definitely is used a lot. So you probably just want to use those two. And then you want to go into hashtags that are less used than that. Something that's used around, been used around 100,000 times. Um, so basically in here, what you'd want to do if this was you is you might want to put like um, a hashtag you're creating yourself. Something that's used only around 100 times or, or a bit more, 1,000 maybe. So you might want to put like um, dog photographer Melbourne, for example, or something silly so consider that um by the way guys in the middle of next month i'm running a workshop um that's all about streamlining your instagram and basically we're going to do three months worth of content in one hour and we're going to cover this in detail and i actually have examples of hashtags to use it's already in system you can update the system really easily to suit yourself um and so we'll go into it in more detail then but i just wanted to cover it really quickly now so anyway awesome to see that um you're using a range of hashtags here chantelle i would just try to find some really lesser used ones that you can also add in there okay so let's move along now to tip number six which is to utilize your instagram as more than a portfolio photographers are so lucky when it comes to Instagram because we have beautiful images which makes sharing easy however sharing beautiful photo after beautiful photo after beautiful photo doesn't really help to convert your followers into clients it does help them like trust that you know how to take photos because the more you share obviously the more chances are that you know how to photograph their dog and all of this kind of stuff. But sometimes we can use our Instagram to actually tell the viewer what you want them to hear. Okay. So I'm going to show you a beautiful account as an example, uh, which is going to be paparazzi. So if you scroll down through paparazzi pet photography, you will see gorgeous images here. On occasion, she's also added like this one, the newspaper article, or I think it is, um, which helps to build trust and credibility, a magazine article, sorry. Um, I noticed that she was sharing some, yeah, here we go. Like that she's going to be working in Goa, uh, I'm assuming, or that she did a shoot in Goa. Um, you can push this even more, okay? And, um, and what I mean by that is you can share things like FAQs or, um, or before, be behind the scenes or before and after or anything like that. You can really use your account to answer the questions that the client or the follower doesn't even realize they have. Okay, that's how you can be using it. Maybe. And so that leads us to our next tip, tip number seven, which is to use graphics so that way i know straight away if i look at your account and you have an faq that you're sharing i know it's an faq because you put faq there and somebody who does this really well is jess from buck and gold photography she is all over social media doing super well look at this her most recent post five signature wall art sizes and then she's used carousel which instagram loves you use all the different features so that you can check out her different options. Um, she's also done the five most popular spots. 
um, to display wall art in your home. So it's kind of leading them to this wall art sizes. Um, she's put a quote there, which gets shared really well. You know, it's not just her pretty photos, it's her pretty photos mixed in with some really helpful tips and some, some timely information that's gonna help to push clients over the line who are sitting there thinking, I wanna do that one day, but they have a question and then you answer it in your Instagram. It's a really great opportunity um, to, to help with education with your clients is using Instagram in this way. So share products, share FAQs, share how you can use your, um, your own photos, et cetera. All right, tip number eight, utilize the link in bio. Now, lots and lots and lots and lots of people, pretty much most photographers I've seen do have in their bio link, uh, a link to the website at least, okay? Uh, now, I wanna dive into this deeper and think about how we can actually utilize this link in bio to the maximum effect. So basically you have a couple of options with your link in bio. You can send them directly to a book now page if you have are at that point in your business. So if you're already busy and inquiries coming in all the time and you're already utilizing your Instagram to like answer the questions of your followers, et cetera, um, and they already trust you and they're just, most people are ready to book, then you can have a book now button. I would guess that most of you are actually not at that point in your business that clients are confident enough to just book now. So what I recommend you do instead is to instead put a link to your lead magnet. So this can be some click here for my freebie and it might be like, um, the five best pet friendly cafes in, in our town, for example, something that is kind of connected to what you do, but isn't actually giving them a free photo shoot. Okay. It's a way to get their email address so that then you can start your email nurture series and answer all of their questions through that. People love freebies. So I highly recommend you look at putting something like that in your bio. Alternatively, you can use it for if you have a promotion, for example, at the moment, if you're doing Bucky Beautiful series or Tales of wherever you leave book based off Caitlin's strategy, or if you're doing a cal fundraising calendar or a mini session coming up or Christmas photos, you get the idea. You can put the direct link to that in your bio, okay? Alternatively, again, you can have a link to something like a link tree or your own kind of uh, landing page. Click on the link here for Adventure Park Photography and you can see what he's done, which is super cool. By the way, while this is loading, um, we interviewed Chris back in season five, episode three. It was all about... Um, utilizing Instagram basically. So you should skim back. I imagine that Chris has made some changes since then, but still jump back a few seasons and listen to that interview with Chris because it was really great. Anyway, so what Chris has done is he's created a landing page, well, a kind of a landing page, a page on his website with the links that he wanted to direct everyone to. So people can click on the link in bio and land here. He has sessions, blog posts, newsletter, facts, contact, blah, 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 okay? So you can do the same thing. Now, Chris mentioned to me that the reason he does this is because then people are already on his website. It has exactly the link that he wants to send them to. So if he's done a post that says, you know, an Instagram post that says, check out my blog, link in bio, then it takes them to here and show away this blog. But also they're already on his website. So they can have a look around and they might be like ready to book as well. Some experts will suggest this is a good idea and others will say it is not. Um, I like the idea of this. I do think that it might be working a bit better if it was just a landing page, which means there's no menu there. It's still his website, so it still helps to build 
traffic, which helps for SEO. Um, but there's no distraction. So your client would, or your potential client will only see these options here. Um, that's probably what I would be considering doing. But I do see Chris's point that if they're here and then they get, they think, oh, well, I might just look at pricing, then they can find, find it easily. Your alternate option to creating your own landing page on your, page on your website is to do one like we have for the Pet Photographers Club, which is using Linktree. Lots of photographers use it. So that is the link in bio um, tip. And then our final tip, number nine, is plan ahead. I mentioned briefly earlier that I have a workshop happening next month in August. If you're listening to this delayed, I'm talking about August 2021. It is a paid workshop. It's just $39, um, but I'm gonna give you a discount in just a second for listening to this. Basically the workshop is all about planning three months content in just that hour. We're all gonna do it together. We're gonna to share ideas. We're going to type out exactly what our post is going to say. And you can even put some photos in there already and start making your graphics and everything. I'm going to have templates ready for you so that you can just press play on your content calendar and it's all going to fire. You don't have to think about your Instagram for the next three months, apart from, of course, jumping in and doing your Instagram stories and this kind of thing. Um, I would also recommend you set up an automation so that when you have a client shoot, um, those images automatically also add into your Instagram. So you have some current content going in there amongst your three month plan. And then your three month plan should be able to be recycled the next three months and on and on and on with just a couple of little adjustments. So basically we are going to do your Instagram for the rest of your life. <laughs> Almost. Um, it comes with the free content calendar. And if I just show you what I'm talking about there, this is one part of it here, um, but there is a bunch of different aspects to it. And basically we're gonna write everything out and we're gonna make it super simple and in one hour we can have it done. If you're interested, this is the page on our website. Go to the petphotographersclub.com slash events and scroll down because you'll land at the top to August online Instagram workshop. It is at 8 p.m. Rome time. Do not ask me what time that is in your part of the world, but click on the time zone converter and it will soon tell you. It's on Monday, the 9th of August. It is $39 for non-members or $29 for our members. And if you've been listening to this, then, then you just need to use the code LISTENER10 to also get that $10 off. So it's just $29. Like I said before, it comes with um, the three-month content planner that we sell on our website for $129. So this is a steal. You get the workshop. We're going to plan it all together so it's not another thing on your to-do list. And you get the content calendar. And it's $100 cheaper than just the content calendar. So don't miss it. So on the 9th of August, there will be a replay for those who pay in advance but don't make it. But I highly recommend you come live if you can because otherwise it's going to be another thing sitting on your to-do list that you never actually do. That's it for now, guys. Thanks so much for tuning in to this episode. Um, make sure you jump back and have a look through the accounts of all of the photographers that I shared with you today uh, because they're doing some really cool stuff. Have a look at your account and um, see how you can make it even better. And I look forward to seeing you guys all at this upcoming workshop um, next month. That's it for now. Bye. Thanks for listening to the Pet Photographers Club. To subscribe to the podcast, check out other episodes and keep up to date, head to thepetphotographersclub.com.